I cut the check, I cut the check, I cut the check Tell my niggas we up next, so we up next She shot a text, she shot a text, she shot a text Kill the p- I might put the bitch to rest Put a nigga on that same shit I've been ballin' with my niggas, Kevin King Bridge Oh, you drippy, but you better tuck your chain quick Hey, first off, I want to say like the video, subscribe, share. If you like the video, I can get big. I can get... Re- if you like the video more, it's going to reach out to more people. So like the video, subscribe, share. Help me out a little bit. I didn't say this in my video. That's why I'm making another recording. So like the video. All right, peace out. What's good, y'all? We back with another video, man. I'm excited to be back. I'm excited that today is finally the start of the NBA season. No more preseason Real NBA games that really count. That's gonna be. It's gonna be hard to get these wins, man. Especially with this whole coronavirus thing going on. All the traveling they're gonna do. I wouldn't. If I was a fan, I wouldn't expect this season to go by perfect as you want. Like me as a Lakers fan, I know we're gonna be one of the best teams, but I'm also scared because if LeBron catches a virus or if AD catches a virus, we are done because they're gonna be out for two weeks, mandatory because you gotta take that two week. Uh, Two week, uh, two week days off for the uh, recovery, and hopefully we get no uh, false positives because I don't know if they're able to overturn that. Even though the next day you might get tested and you might be tested um, negative, but hopefully we don't get no false positives and hopefully we can get through the season healthy. Um, now nah, I'm not gonna say what I want to say because I feel like that's petty. But yeah, hopefully nobody gets the virus, and hopefully we can just get through the season. So we got. So we don't have no people complaining. Like a lot of people will complain that their best player gets the virus and they lose the next four games. That's usually in two weeks. So before we get into NBA talk, I want to get into the best game in football of the week. To me, was no bias. Saints versus the Chiefs. Now to me, this was really eye opening. Now this whole season, my Saints been pretty good. We're eleven. We were eleventh and two. Or ten and two before that game. I think we were eleven and two before that game. Um, defense looked great. We were the number one defense at one point before we played the Chiefs. We were the number before we played the Eagles. We were the number one defense, and we looked great. I'm not gonna lie. My thing with my defense is front seven and front eight. We're we're, we're stacked. Trey Hendrickson is having a Pro Bowl season, even though he didn't make the Pro Bowl, but he's leading the league in st- um sacks. That's pretty weird and biased. They just pick the names. They don't pick the people that actually deserve it. Because Cam Jordan made it. And even though he's my boy, he's on my team, he's not having no year compared to uh, TJ. I mean, Trey. I said TJ, Trey. Um, I don't even think. Cam Jordan probably got like 7, 8 sacks. Trey has 12.5. Had 3 in 1 game twice. So, that's, that's wild. That's whack. We got Trey. We got Cam. On your models on our line. We got Rankins on our line. And then our our, our linebackers are stacked too. We got Demario Davis, first team all pro last year. Quan Alexander's no bad. No bad linebacker. We still got Alex Anzalone. I really like him. He gets fast to the ball. So our front eight. And then we play one of our centers, CJ Gardner Johnson, a person that I really like. No homo. I really like him. I feel like he can play a lot of positions on that defense. Safety, corner, linebacker, which he does. So, we got that, but then our problem is our secondary. Janoris Jenkins, cool. Marshawn Lattimore, first team all pro, great. The, what's his name? I forgot his name. Marshawn, Marshawn Williams, he's he's great. He's really good. Um, other than that, we, we kind of like Luster. We got DJ Swanger, he's just a person that makes the big hit. Patrick Robinson gets blown gets blown by every time he plays. Uh, he cost us the game last season in the playoffs. He cost us went in the playoffs, went overtime. Should have beat that team. Went overtime. I think Janoris Jenkins or Marshawn Lattimore got hurt the play before. So they put um Patrick Robinson in and uh what's the name? Adam Thielen just blew by him. Adam Thielen, he's not He's slow. He's slow. He's slow. One of the best receivers in the league, but slow. And he just blew by him, threw the ball, caught it. They did that to play after, so they attacked it right after. And then right after that, they threw that touchdown. So he basically cost us the L. But, yeah, we got him. But other than that, we really don't have no corners. Like I said, CJ plays a corner, but 
his main game to me is safety, guarding them tight ends, and then stopping around. He does that like it's a lot of tackles for his position. So that was my oh, my problem with my team. But like for the fr for the first thirteen weeks, we've been doing pretty good. And even against the Chiefs, we did really good. And that's the thing I don't think people are realizing. First of all, I want to say this: Drew Brees is back from an injury. Praise the Lord, Drew Brees is back from an injury. We had no number one wide receiver. We had so many. I know my team. We had so many people I did not know who was out there. Um, Michael Thomas is out to the playoffs, which I'm happy about because even when he came back, he didn't look the healthiest. So the fact that he's going to get this injury stop so we can go into to the playoffs fully healthy is great. Deontay Harris is out with a neck injury. The dude I just found out about uh, a few weeks ago, Mar Marquise Callaway, a dude I really like, great punt returner, and he was a good wide receiver when we needed him. He's out with, I think, an ankle injury, so that sucks. So, like, three of our best wide receivers are out. Emmanuel Sanders cannot do it all by himself. He's not, he's 33. He's not the old Emmanuel Sanders. He can't do it all by himself. Uh, all the focus was basically on him with the double teams, but then everything else was just man-on-man -man covers with all, all the other wide receivers that we had out there. And they could not get open. Drew Brees had to force it to him to even get a first down, and they could not get open. So... I, I'm not looking too deep into the fact that Drew Brees didn't really have a good game stat-wise. When we needed Drew Brees, he always showed up, and he did show up. Gave us a quick touchdown. We just drove down the field. But let me go from the let me go from the stop from the top. We scored. Then, no. First of all, it was back to back. Um, three and outs. Defense was looking good. I'm not gonna lie. We looked really good. Then Drew Brees threw a bomb, and I was like, yeah, my quarterback's back. Threw a 51-yard bomb on the money, and he looked at the sideline like, yeah, yeah, I'm back. So I was excited to see that, and then we scored off that. 7-0, they came back, scored real quick. But the way our defense played them was like, y'all going to have to run the ball. And I don't think a lot of teams play them like that because our run defense is like that. It's like that. Even though at the end of the game, we got tired, but I'm going to tell you why we got tired. But our run defense is like that. So, they really couldn't throw the ball like that. We sagged him a couple times. We was hitting Patrick Mahomes. That's how you get under his skin. We was hitting him because then he starts to complain. I'm not even going to talk about the announcers. That's The announcers are just so annoying. Everything out there, Mahomes was like, Mahomes so great. I love Mahomes. Like, yo, calm down, but. Other than that, we was hitting Mahomes. And they started to they started to spread us out a little bit more. They, the run started to work a little bit, but this is why the run started to work. Our offense could not get a damn first down because we have no wide receivers. Our run can take you so far. And we also lost a tackle, uh, Andrews Pete, and we was also already out of tackle, so our our, our whole team was banged up. But we had no wide receivers because nobody can create separation. Drew Brees had to force the ball so many times to where one time he just threw an interception because we had no separation. And our defense had the kid coming out there every three every three plays, and they were tired. It was obviously they, they were fatigued because in the beginning we were wearing them out. And even towards the third quarter and the start of the fourth quarter, we was wearing them out. And then we almost came back, but we could not get a stop because our offense could not get up has three three on um, down and it was it was wild to see that we would we had 29 points scores 32 to 29 bro that game was not supposed to be that close that's that's the where i'm looking at i'm like i'm happy that we were actually in this game without any wide receiver not even just our starting all pro wide receiver but we were without our speedy two speedy uh slot wide receivers and with that, Emmanuel Sanders is going to get all the coverage. So the one thing I'm going to need my team to do, while those three on, are on injured reserve, we got to go get Kenny Stills. Because every team's going to do that to us. Every team's going to do that to us. We don't have another person that is known to actually do something in this league. No offense to the people that we had out there, but like you heard what that announcer said. They were brung up from the practice squad because we had no wide receivers. So we need to go get Kenny Stills as a wide receiver. That's him for you to see a great slot wide receiver, great hands, great speed, still young. So we need him because uh, who we got next? I think we got somebody hard next. So we need him bad. But I'm proud of my team. I'm proud of my defense. We actually look like we can do something this year. 
Not gonna lie. We actually look like bearing and bearing we get cheated like we did a couple years ago. We actually look like we do something this year. Our offense is so balanced and our defense is nice. This is the most balanced team Drew Brees has ever had. Where the offense is great, the defense is great. Now it's on him to take us there. So hopefully we can do that. Hopefully the line can block us. Drew Brees is getting hit a little bit too much for me, bro. He just came off a rib injury. But he got up one time because he got hit right in his ribs. He got up real quick, so hopefully my quarterback's back. Um, Yeah, hopefully we can make it to the playoffs, man. I really, I mean, hopefully we can do something in the playoffs. Like, if we go to the MC Championship, that's successful for me because we could never get over that hump. Unless the last, the year when we got cheated, which I'm not going to talk about, but we need to get over that hump, and this is the perfect team we have for it. So, other than that, Steelers lost to the Bengals. Ravens had a layup game. Jalen Hurts took Carson Wentz's spot, making Carson Wentz look bad. And I love Carson Wentz, but I can't even I can't even make any excuses for him no more. I was like, yo, that line is terrible. Like, look what he has to do with. Well, that line is blocking now, and them wide receivers that were once quarterbacks are running routes now. So I I don't even think the team likes Carson Wentz. So I think he just got to get out of there because every time he gets out, every time he gets hurt, or when now he gets benched, that Eagles team goes crazy. And it's so weird. It's so weird. <laughs> but, ah, uh, yeah, he got to get out. Um, hopefully, Phillip Rivers retires this year. Hopefully, he can go to the Colts. Jaguars, if they, they don't get Trevor Lawrence, they don't feel comfortable in Justin Fields, make that trade. Y'all can't. Hey, I'll take, yo, Carson Wentz only like 28. Bro, two years ago, he was just an MVP. He was just an MVP two years ago. If he didn't get hurt, he would have won it. And it was no doubt he would have won it. And that year was crazy, actually. Because Mr. Trubisky was there, too. Um, Le'Veon Bell was... It was hella... It was weird that year. Carson Wentz, Mr. Trubisky, Alex Smith, Le'Veon Bell were MVP candidates that year. That, that, that year was weird. <laughs> that year was weird. But, yeah. I, I wouldn't give up on him. As far as this team, I would give up on Carson Wentz, but like, as far as the NFL, making him a backup quarterback, I, I find him better than a lot of starting quarterbacks in this league. I just can't. I, maybe I'm holding on to that MVP season a little bit too much, but that's the last time that his line actually really gave a fuck and actually blocked for him because that line terrible, but you put Jalen Harris in that thing, it looked good. But other than that, Pro Bowls got announced. A lot of people got snubbed. Main part I'm mad about Trey Henderson. That's just, that makes no sense. That makes no sense. You lead the league in sacks. You don't make it. And it's people that's under you and then sack rankings that you obviously had a better year than, but they make it because their name is more. That's what it is. That's just what it is. But I want to get into the main topic of today. I want to talk about. Not just players, but things we should look forward to in this NBA season. This is going to be a crucial NBA season. Crucial NBA season. Make or break for a lot of teams. Championship or bust. Playoff or bust. Or bust for a lot of teams. So, first off, I want to talk about Sekou Dumbia. Let me see when he was drafted. He was drafted last year, but I don't. I think he was a. I think he was a close lottery pick. He was the 15 pick, so the pick right after the lottery. I, I just want to see what they saw in him. Like what I'm seeing in this um in the preseason, just what I look in his highlights. Like he's cool. But 15, though, where you could have had Nikhil Alexander Walker, um, T Style, Brandon Clark, Darius Baisley, Nasir Little, um, Kevin Porter. But this draft wasn't so deep, so maybe they just they was just like, he's a project, we're gonna have to build him up. So I can't understand that, but I I, I don't know what is he like. He's listed as a power four, but I'm like, dude, his frame is small. He's too small to play that. He's listed as, but he, I mean, he can play a small four, but he's also 
slow. The handles is not really there. The shots not really there. So I understand why he plays power forward because he's more of a pick and roll slasher. Um, can get to the rim. Uh, not really a good finisher, but he can get there. I just want to see what he brings to the table this year. Blake's going to be gone soon, hopefully. Uh, Derrick Rose is going to be gone soon. So that's going to be a young team. So even Kylo, du Sekou, Dumbia, Killian Hayes, Sadiq Bey, they're all going to have the team. They're all going to be young. So hopefully they embrace the rebuild. But I want to see what they've seen in him to where they wanted to draft him right there. Because to me, I'm like, yo, what? I don't see it. I don't see, like, he's cool, like I said. But I, I want to see something else. I want to see. I, I want him to be a three. A small four. I don't think he can be a power four. I think he's just offense wise is just not like that to be a small four. But um my next person that I wanna see take a big jump, but I don't know if he can is Cam Reddish. Like I said, for for what the Hawks did in the all season was good for them, for the organization, because they most likely will make the playoffs, but for a lot of people on that team that were hoping to take that next jump, and for a lot of fans that's expecting these players to take that next jump, I don't know if they will take it because the amount of depth that was in that team. They have Trey, Kevin Herter, Kim Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, John Collins, Clint Capella, Danilo Gallinari, Ron John Rondo, Chris Dunn. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. Anyaka Uncomfortable. Somebody else. That, oh, Bogdan. That's 11 man deep. And I wanted, I felt like Cam Reddish, this was his year to take that next jump to where I felt like a lot of teams passed on him and it was stupid for a lot of teams. My team including, that, that pissing me off still. But my team including, passing on Cam Reddish was just dumb for a lot of teams. And I felt like this year was his year to show that. But now he has so much in front of him that I don't even know if he's going to get that time to show that. They already said they're starting Bogdan. That's one of Cam's positions. They already said they're starting DeAndre Hunter. That's another of Cam's position. But Cam, um, with his great defense, he can probably play the floor, the four sometimes. But they're starting John Collins. And then off the bench, you have Cam. You have Ron John, Chris Dunn. You have Kevin Herder. You have Anyaka Kungu, like... Where is Cam going to get his minutes? If he's not playing at an all-star level for that team, I don't see him getting minutes. I see him getting like 15, 10 to 15 minutes. But I, I, I think Cam is one of the best players on that team, but I don't know if he's going to get minutes because that team is so stacked with players that deserve to play. Players that got signed to play. So, I don't know. I don't know if he's going to take that big jump that everybody's expecting him to take. He had a great preseason. And I'm happy for him, but I don't know if that's going to carry on to the regular season because of the just amount of opportunity that he's going to get. And I want him to get that opportunity, but I don't know if it's going to be there. You feel me? I don't. I don't know if he's going to get that amount of time to play with that team. So hopefully they prove me wrong. I don't know. But um, my third thing I want to talk about is the 76ers and who is going to step up to be that third option. And the two people I was thinking about that have a possibility possibility of doing that, Seth Curry and Tobias Harris. Now, Seth, Tobias Harris is getting paid number one option money. $34 million max contract as you're supposed to be a number one option. But we all know he's not. And we all know he's not even number two option. Probably not even a number three option. Um, It was a little tier thing, and it was naming the best players on the uh, 76ers. And it had Tobias over Seth, and I'm like, I, I'm taking Seth over Tobias. One, I got to think about the contract. Two, just consistency. Seth, any if your last name Curry, you're not going to be inconsistent. This is not. Seth Curry is really consistent shooting, and not only just shooting, he can play make for others, and he can play make for other um for his own. And people don't really know like he's just not he's not just a shooter. Like last year when Luca was out for that one month for a couple of weeks. Seth Curry was averaging 20 points. Seth Curry and Christoph Porzingis beat the Bucks at the Bucks' home. They were killing the Bucks together. He he has the ability to step up this year and be that third option. Um, I hope he can do that. That would be exciting for me because I'm a big Seth Curry fan. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know who's gonna step up for that third option. Tobias. 
he should and everybody's looking at him to be like he was I want to say 18 17 point score last year so he has the numbers but consistency Tobias will have games where he'll have 30 then he'll go to 4 10 11 then back to 25 then 5 6 and then 12 like it's so inconsistent it's all it's all up and down like the Tobias can be 18 points Throughout the whole season, just 18, 18, or 25, 25, 18, 18, 30, that's not bad. But it'll be games where Tobias is just missing everything and not doing nothing on defense. It's just, it'll be games where you can just cancel him out sometimes. And I can, you cannot do that with Steph Curry. You can't. Because the shooting, and then if, if they really, if they want to do something where him and Ben Simmons running that pick and roll, or him and Joel and B running that pick and roll, you're fucked. You can't really do nothing because either he's going to pull up, he's going to either take it to the basket or he's going to throw a pass to Joel B to the post or to the three if he fades up. So, I don't know. I'm just waiting to see who's going to be that third option. I'm really intrigued about that. That's one thing I'm really looking forward to. And another thing I'm looking forward to is the Warriors. Who is going to step up for the Warriors? Is Andrew Wiggins going to finally have that season that everybody's expecting him to have? Now, look at this, though. I say that, but then I'm like, I'm looking at Andrew Wiggins' stats. Dude is a consistent 20-point player. And I'm like, yo, what more do I want from him? And I'm thinking, like, probably not that much because, like, he's averaging 20 points. Like, he's a good scorer. And the reason why I think people look at him to beat that guy because when he came out of high school, what were they calling him? Maple Jordan. They were saying he's the next Jordan, the next LeBron. Um, that, just all that hype that he got, and he did not live up to it. That's why he gets so much hate. That's why people say he shouldn't have been a number one pick. Well, he's putting up number one pick type numbers. He's just probably not a number one option like everybody wants him to be. So, and that's what I'm saying. I think they're going to do this with Zion. Zion's supposed to be this big... He's big LeBron comparison. Like they compare him to LeBron every damn day. And if he don't live up to that, they'll be quick to call him a bust. Like they call Andrew Wiggins a bust. I'm like, this dude's averaging 20 points, five rebounds. Like, how the hell is he a bust? But what I want to see from Andrew Wiggins, I just want to see if he get able to step it up, make it make it consistent, show up on the defensive side. He had a really good preseason. The last game he dogged it. Uh, he dogged the Kings. Had a really good preseason. If not Andrew Wiggins, I want to see Kelly Oubre make that next step, be a 20-point scorer. He was at 17, 18 last year, so he's a, he's able to do it. He's going to have the time to do it. And, yeah, just balance so where Steph Curry doesn't have to carry all the load. Maybe James Wiseman comes out of nowhere and just has a great rookie season where he averages 15 and 10. Possible, but I don't see. I see James Wiseman, James Wiseman averaging like 13 and 8. And him and Draymond is going to be really good, though. Him and Draymond is going to be good. Hopefully, Draymond can go back to the Portland 2019 series, Draymond. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch that series. That series had Damian Lillard, Clay, CJ McCollum, but Draymond was the best player in that series. Hands down. Hands down. Hands down. The defense, playmaking, he was shooting the hell out of the ball. Hands down, he was the best player in that series. So, hopefully, somebody can step up to where Steph doesn't have to carry all the load. I don't want them to win the finals this year. Because I don't even want people to say Seth did it without Clay. That just doesn't sound right to me. But if they can go in there in the playoffs and challenge some teams, then I'll be excited. But the next thing I want to talk about is the Clippers. To me, the Clippers didn't get better at all. They, they got, they're right, they're where they were at last season. You lost Montrez, you picked up Serge Ibaka. Cool. Doesn't really make you better than me. That wasn't really their problem at all either. Their problem was playmaking. They had no playmaker. To where you got to slow the game down, you can't rely on somebody to play me. You're not going to rely on Patrick Beverly, even though that's my man. You're not going to rely him on him to do playmaking. And they just signed Luke Kennard to $17 million a year. $64 million contract, $17 a year. That, that threw me off. That threw me off. $17 million for Luke Kennard. I understand shooting. He has the ability to play me a little bit, but are they going to let him do that? Probably not. Um, yeah, they. I don't know why they did that. I don't know why. They had Landry Shamit. They traded Landry Shamit where he can do the same shit that Luke Kennard does to me. 
I actually, now that I think about it, that was bad. That was 17 million, that was bad. But, um, yeah, they signed him. They got Sergi Baca, a person that can spread the four, elite, elite side blockers, so that helps a little bit. I think if PG's going to have a revenge here because y'all like to get on his head for no reason. I still think he's top 15. I've been seeing lists where he's top 25, around the 20 to 25 range. I'm like, no, no. I'm still not taking Jason Tatum over him. I'm not going to take Chris Paul. I'm not taking... That's it. That's it. I ain't going to go deep. But, yeah, there's a lot of players that won't take over Paul Jordan. He didn't really even have that bad of a playoff series, but... I'm gonna just leave y'all. I'm gonna let y'all have that. Kawhi Leonard, I'm he's he's top three. So it, it's time to put up a setup, bro. You came to LA saying you the king. You had all these commercials saying you the king. Well now you gotta show it after y'all just got bounced out by the Nuggets last year. So for them is this they really didn't get better. They really didn't get what they needed. It was a tweet that said the Clippers, um NBA executive said the Clippers have something up their sleeve. I'm hoping that's Derrick Rose because that's the perfect person they need. Person that can play make, also play all ball, shoot the ball. So, uh, hey, that's perfect. That Them and the Bucks, they need Derrick Rose. They, they should be calling him every day. And I thought he was making like $18 million. He's only making $7 million. So, it's a contract you should be able to trade. Like, trade. Damn, I don't even know the Clippers have. For like the Milwaukee Bucks, trade. Trade Brian Flores and trade... Pat Connison, get Derrick Rose. Get it. put a pick on it. Get Derrick Rose. Y'all won the championship. I'll put. I'll make y'all a title contender if y'all do that. I, I really would. So, yeah. Next is our Denver. Is Denver gonna allow MPJ to take the next step? The reason why I say is Denver going to allow MPJ to take the next step. We're all expecting him to take the next step, but are they going to start Will Bart? Will Barton came back and said he's not coming off the bench. He just said he's not coming off the bench. They paid Gary Harris $17 million. I don't think he's coming off the bench. They brought him back Paul Nelson. That is the defensive anchor for that starting lineup. I don't think he's coming off the bench. Will Michael Porter Jr. be able to take that next step like we think he is? Because we all know he should be a starter unanimously. unanimously. He should start a Will Barton. He's way better than Will Barton. But are they going to be able to? Are they going to allow him to take that next step? I don't know. I, I can't. Really, that's why when I had most approved, he would have been up there. But I don't know if he's going to be allowed to take that next step. The step that he deserved to take, he proved it in the playoffs, proved it in the bubble, all together. He should be the third option, and he will be a really good third option when they give him the keys to be that third option. So will MPJ take that next step? We hope so. But. I don't know. I don't know. I love Mike Malone, but I feel like he he has to take he has to be that person to be that third option, and he he really is. But I don't know if they're gonna be able to give it to him. But um, two more. Will Lamelo get that starting spot? We've seen this whole preseason. Lamelo came out the bench, gave some really good highlights for us, but like shooting inconsistent, inconsistent as hell. Um, yeah, the shooting in general was really consistent. Three point shot, inconsistent. But the passes are the passes were really amazing, I'm not gonna lie. And they sold the passes a lot on ESPN, Bleach Report, um, House of Highlights, House Hoop High, Hoop Diamonds, like it was all over the place. But will he be able to get that starting spot? Everybody thinks he's gonna win the um rookie of the year. If you see all these ballots out, you see the predictions out from everybody, even ESPN, they say LaMelo's gonna win it. I agree, but I don't know if he's going to get the opportunity to win it, just like Michael Porter Jr. He's coming off the bench. So the stats are going to be lower off the bench, especially if you're a rookie. I was seeing him averaging like 13-7-7 as a starter because I thought they drafted him to be a starter, but they love they love um, Devontae. They love Terry Rozier. They pay him $18 million. So is Lamar going to be, I mean, is LaMelo going to be able to get that starter spot? I don't know. I don't know. Will he average 13-7-7 and seven and seven like we all thought he would? I don't think so no more. I think it goes down a lot. I think he got to change the jump shot. That shit, that shit looks terrible, bro. It looks terrible. He got to change the jump shot like Lonzo did for the better. But um, last one is who's gonna get these seven and eight seeds for both conference? These playing games makes it really hard. 
If you're a seven seed, you are not safe because you have to play in a playing game. If you lose that one game in a playing game, you're done. You got to fight for the eighth seed, I think. I think it's like seventh seed plays like the tenth seed. Eighth seed plays the ninth seed. Whoever wins the eighth seed versus ninth seed goes to the goes to the seventh seed. And whoever wins seven versus ten, if seven loses, they go to play the loser of... I don't know. That shit confusing. But... Yeah, you got you gotta you gotta be a top six seed to be secured to make the playoff. So I don't know. We might see a, a sleeper team making the Kings look really good. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't like what the um, Pelicans did this offseason, but they look really good. Bi and Zion look like they got better. Lonzo got way better. I think he proved. Uh, what's his name? Stan Van Gundy wrong because Stan Van Gundy was like, why can't Lonzo be a spot up shooter and a good playmaker? Well, he's not that. And he went out and dogged the other day against the Bucks, shooting mid range shots. And I'm like, okay, Lonzo taking it off the pick and roll for himself. And I'm like, I'm loving what I'm seeing from Lonzo. He didn't get the extension because he feel like by the end of the season he's going to be way more than what they were going to give him. They were probably going to give him. What they gave Markel Foles, like $17 million. Lonzo's trying to prove that he's worth way more than that. And I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm really in. So I think they can be a sleeper team. People, A lot of people vote them off because the fit. They got Eric Blesso. They got Steven Adams. You put them next to Zion. That's pretty nasty, and I agree with that. But they, they look good. I'm not going to lie. They look good. So other than that, we'll see what this NBA season holds. It's going to be a really exciting one, though. I'm watching basketball every day. Got my laptop, got my TV. It's a little website. You can watch any basketball game for free. Let me know. I'll put you on. I'll put you on. But other than that, that's it.